Hello gorgeous people, cellists from all around the world, welcome. We're going through the um, Suzuki book two today. Um, I'm doing what I can and we're already on the variation. We've already done our warm-ups. If you're just if you're just arriving at this podcast, please warm up. Please stretch, physically stretch. I really like the uh, um, my students to do the yoga stuff. And it's difficult because you're not with me. I can't make you do things. So we have to imagine that you're um, doing um, what I'd like you to do. Um, and, you know, one has to just hope. So let's just pop on my backing track. Now, today we're going to have a quick look at the... Well, nothing's quick, actually, is it, anymore these days? I think when you get to a certain stage of musicianship, nothing is quick anymore. Um, but I'll be uh, fairly brief. Now, what we're doing now is the variation of the Long, Long Ago by T.H. Bailey. And this is... I'm going to turn that down a little, I think. It's C major still. But it's... what What's going on? It looks so busy, doesn't it? Don't panic, it's exactly the same tune, but what they've done is they've stuck a load of G's in, uh, open G's. So if you look, if you can get both uh, pieces uh, in front of you, the, the first bar, C, C, D, E, E, and F natural, I'll just say F. And if you look underneath, it's C added G, C, D, E added G. Do you see? They're adding G's. Every time there's a longer note, they stick a G in. I, I think that's quite helpful to know what's going on. And it's an open G. And what's really good about this is it really tunes your ear because um, you've got to be uh, bar two, um, those two G's. Uh, this is why Suzuki is so good, you see. It's a sort of cheater's way of getting your ear to improve. So we've got this... You need... To, those are an octave apart. And you'll just get so good at understanding um, what what's in tune and what's not. Because you're doing these octaves next to each other. It's a really good study. A really useful tool. So I'm not going to play it all. I'm going to explain to you the difference between... A slur that's a slur same bow movement now some slurs you would differentiate between the notes you would do this just there was a slight differentiation there I I Pressed a little, released a little, pressed a little, released a little, pressed a little, changed notes, and pressed again. Do you see? But some slurs, you keep exactly the same pressure on both notes. And I think if you can do that for this, rather than... differentiating between those but if you can really slur them that is going to be a very impressive um, technique for you to grapple with early on in your um, in your advancing musicianship okay We, I don't want you to take your bow off the string. You sort of push it a little. There's some energy coming from your body, and it's really you're doing this with your hand. But of course, there's a string crossing, so it's a little bit tricky. So you're going to have to work at that. to do them quickly. 
quickly than to do them slowly. But I want you to do it slowly. And the string crossings do throw you a little bit. But do you know what? It's quite easy to do a staccato string crossing because you're... You're playing a half a half the note, so you've got that half time when you're off the string to get to the next note. Do you see? So it's a, it, it's all, it's like a rest. I mean, it's played like a rest, albeit a quick rest. Um, so I I have the version of this up on uh, I think Vapor Punk has done it. You can go and have a listen and play along. I like this. I think this is good fun. Um, repeat 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 and but do it slowly and make sure if you want to um i in fact i recommend that you get some highlighters and because when you when you um do this relatively quickly you can get confused about whether you're supposed to be doing an up bow or a down bow because don't forget these staccatos uh, uh sorry these staccatos are on the um, the same bow movement, so up, up. Um, actually, it might be helpful if I down, uh, down, down, up, up, 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 down, 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 up, up. Sorry. Um, do you see what I mean? It's quite useful to just uh, chant that. Do it slowly. Um, but you could get some highlighters and you know do the down the down bow notes just blot those in yellow and then the up blow up bow a nice contrasting color blue um dark, you know quite a dark blue um you know that might help actually or chanting as i just did there i think that would be really helpful as well now what i recommend is once you've got this mastered that you use the all of the suzuki songs that you, you've done as warm-ups so look nothing's ever mastered uh, but when I say mastered what I mean is once you're happy with them um, so already when you sit down for your practice um, because we're focusing on, on a set of skills in, in book two um, a particular set of skills m markedly um, uh, intonation tonalization in position one and position two so if you start at the beginning so you sit down um you've done your stretches you've breathed you're breathing nicely you've done a bit of yoga um you you're in a space of well-being and comfort and you've done some uh, you know proper um checks that your body's straight etc etc that you do the tonalization the ringing sound long long ago and the variation as a warm-up and then you can go and then you can start training may time which is my next piece i'm going to do with you i need a coffee though so i think i might pop off for coffee first and um, there we go that's uh, another one bites the dust <laughs> <laughs> 